Hey fellow Vault Warriors, it's Angry Turtle, and before we'll go into the details about my new Stealth Sniper build, let me say thank you to my first ever Patreon, t 4168 Thank you a lot for your support on my Patreon, you are my first ever Patreon. And as I will be showing you my build, guys, remember that there is a lot of possibilities, you can change a lot about my builds and it still will be great, it will be yours, you can use exactly like I have or different one. And it's awesome then, please just let me know in comments what you would like to change, what you prefer to use if you do play as Stealth Sniper. Like for example, Tyre I think posted a month ago his Stealth Sniper build and it was awesome as well. And now I will slay some monsters in our name while demonstrating my Stealth Sniper build. And now into the build demonstration. I'm starting with the full health, this will be eventually a bloodied build, but I want to show you that even in a daylight when the Mr. Sandman doesn't work, this build can be valuable. And the weapon I have equipped at this moment is Gauss Rifle, bloodied with plus 10% damage while aiming, which means that I'm only getting this plus 10% damage while aiming, no other bonuses, and we have some super mutants. And if I charge my weapon and shoot him in the head, he's dead. I have enough damage with this weapon to one-shot those super mutants. Let me rotate a little bit closer. Where are the other super mutants? They're quite far away. There is a lot of magnification with this scope. Can I take him down from this distance? Oh, he's hiding. But I can take down Dogo. Oh, and there is one a little bit closer, looking in the ground. Oh, he dodged. Sudden movement, but I got him. And I have more weapons. The main weapon to actually snipe with full health will be my instigating bullet explode lever action rifle. That actually do even better, but mainly because it can shoot faster. You don't need to wait so long. And obviously instigating is very useful if you play full health. Other option, as you probably notice, I have a lot of addictions. I have with me this Junkies the Fixer just to demonstrate to you that you can actually use this build with multiple weapons and to be absolutely honest, it's much more satisfying than I expected it to be. I wasn't expecting this to build to be so satisfying to play. The sniping is actually fun with this. I will show you all the details after I will finish my demonstration in action. And this weapon, the junkie, still can one shoot. In a torso, you need more than one shot. But if you get a headshot with 2.5 times sneak multiplier and you stack some adrenaline, then it pretty much can one shot. And plus of this weapon, it shoots really fast. And about my armor, uh, when I play full health, I have almost no bonuses from this because it's all leather and yielding. And yielding is my main focus on armor. The other uh, bonuses are whatever was available. And my focus was to get full set of leather with unyielding. Then some are sentinel, some are cavalier, some are junk weight reduction. There is not a single piece with harder to detect while sneaking, unfortunately, at this moment. I'm still hunting to replace one with harder to detect while sneaking, but I'm looking only for unyielding leather. About my under armor, if we are on this topic, it's shielded leathers, especially for this agility perception bonus. And I'm still wearing the tattered dress just because it's giving plus one perception. Like Sinister Hand was joking once, I'm the person that will wear a pink unicorns if this will have the highest bonus. Uh, something else in that, I don't know. I, this one perception and nothing else gives actually bonuses and I, I'm so tempted by that to actually use it. And as you can see, even without unyielding bonuses, I'm doing quite well and they cannot really detect me straight away. And as usually they die pretty fast, they have no chance to detect me. They can only blindly, blindly fire towards me. And I can even snipe a little bit with this green dot. Now let's see how this build will be doing. If I will actually irradiate myself and go back into the nerd rage zone when this build excels. Oh, here. Let me just grab my long gamma gun to quickly grab my rats. A couple shots will do it. 
a little bit more. Not yet, but next shot will be too much. And now my weapons when in Nedridge uh, zone. My bloody black powder rifle is over 1k damage per shot. My ghost rifle is 798. Handmade is 319. Fixer is 331. Yes, Fixer actually have slightly higher damage than Handmade with the same type of the receiver. Bloody lower action rifle, 530. My instigating clever action rifle, 371. It's explosive, but it will be doubled by instigating. And Junkies Fixer, 276. And now let's find some Super Mutant to demonstrate the damage. They hiding. They already know that my damage is high. Oh, this is too much of the magnification, but... Oh, and I missed. Yeah, it's too much of the magnification. Even without charging. It's 3k damage, no charging. Now let's see if I charge the weapon. Oh, 3k damage as well. He was probably outside of the weapon range then. As it should be much more when weapon is charged. Okay, let's see one more guy. How much my ghost will do now. He's coming forward and shoot. Six and half thousand. That's more what I will expect. Let's see different weapon. How much can do handmade? If I can hit. Two and half K. That's pretty crazy. Bloody lower action rifle. The ghouls starting the party. I can do over 2k even on the torso hit. Okay, this lower action rifle is actually with uh, extra critical damage. And I have it molded with ultra sight ammo. But today I will not be able to kill any Scorch Beast Queen. Then I'm holding it for later, probably in the next video. Because I have too much to show to actually squeeze in some Scorch Beast Queen fight into this video. It will be way too long if I do so. But I will do some Scorch Beast Queen fights later on in another video. Now let's test those toys on some Scorch and Scorch Beast, the regular ones. Okay, I equip Concentrated Fire for this party. They were Scorch hiding. I can snipe them from afar and I actually usually prefer the long scope over the microwave scope. This weapon is not as fast in firing, but still is really good. And now let's try to aim for a head and let's see how much this ultra sight ammo can actually do with a critical. Almost one hit this Scorch Beast Queen. Uh, almost one hit this Scorch Beast. Definitely not Scorch Beast Queen, one hit. Let's see if I can snipe those guys from afar without charging my ghost rifle. Yes, you can see, they weak enough that ghost rifle with this build can one-shot them without any charging, what makes my ghost rifle shooting quite fast and they are outside of the weapon range. Still enough damage to one-shot them. That's perfect. Where are you running? Where, where do you think we are going? And I lost him. Okay, can I get the Scorch Beast attention? I think I need to hit her. I cannot hit her. Oh, there is the Scorched. Oh, I don't have a critical ready. Now I do have a critical ready. Now I need some attention from the Scorch Beast. Oh, I got... Oh, I took down half of her health. Just like that. And done! Oh, it's awesome! It's actually better than I expected. I I wasn't playing too much with the ghost rifle before, but the damage is crazy. They're dropping like flies. 
and trench is really impressive. I need more fissures. Oh, and there is a legendary Scotch Beast. That's perfect. That let me just stack my adrenaline and maybe somehow I will gather her attention and I will able to see if I can one shot her. I have my critical ready. Doing pretty crazy damage, but how to attract her without doing damage to her? I will shoot nearby. Oh, some guys are coming. Yeah, the AP cost is much higher than in case of commando build. Let's gently shoot her somehow. Hit her. Keep firing doesn't work too well. Okay, how much damage? Not too much. Uh, I will try to do a little bit more to get her into the regen zone. Okay, now she's regenerating and let's try if I can one hit crit. Almost so close to actually one hit crit legendary Scotch Beast. Almost one hit. That's pretty crazy. If I will take any damage buff, I will probably be able to just one hit. And that's it. Legendary Scorch Beast, I should be able to one hit with Ghost. Then I can charge and shoot. One shot, level 50 Scorch Beast, one shot. Okay, we have another legendary Scorch Beast, and now let's do the test with this beauty. This junk is the fixer, that is actually modded for semi-auto and possibly low uh, AP cost when firing. The accuracy is slightly, slightly lower than normal sniper weapons, but still very good with amount of perception I do have. And let's see now how... Oh wow, that's insane. I, I div didn't even burn... AP at all. Just a little bit of usage. Oh, that's pretty crazy. Okay, another feature as we have more weapons to go for. Like at this moment, let's go for Bloody Defixer. And this one is set up as a sniper weapon. As you can see, it is with a scope. And in this case, it's the short scope. It's generally my favorite. I do like it's exactly as much range as you need it's perfect crosshair and it's very stable scope plus it's easy to follow the target because the magnification is just good enough not too much not too low i really like it like in case of everything else i'm getting way too much of the magnification and still the hit chance is very good long scope helps that for sure and the Scotch Beast don't want to come closer. Then let's invite her and let's see how well you can do with the headshots. Oh, the VATs really. Like I missed with the critical. That was surprising. But after that, it was a couple of shots and I got her down. Like from the latest patch, I noticed that sometimes when I do a VATs critical, my weapon tends to miss for whatever reason. Like VATs critical shouldn't be missing ever. And it is. Okay, that was a damage so showcase with different weapons. And as I said before, I will do the same thing with Scorch Beast Queen. I mean, maybe not all the weapons, but I will kill a Scorch Beast Queen with this build and I will upload a movie, but it will be probably somewhere next week. Maybe Monday, if everything will go as planned. And this black powder rifle, I didn't notice that I ran out of 50 caliber ball. But the main reason I have this is was to one shot Scorch Beast with a critical in VATS. It usually breaks my stealth because there is no way to put suppressor on it. But still, it's very satisfying to get this one shot on Scorch Beast and take her down just like that. Now about my armor. Oh, what I didn't show you yet. Uh, why only three pieces ultra light? As you know, on my stealth commando, I had all pieces ultra light. Then in this case, I have stabilize. What it does, I will show you. I will unequip the left arm and right arm. And now when I aiming, you see how how this is all going up, down, left and right. If I press Alt, it will stop. But as you notice, it takes like one second to stabilize. 
Now if I will just put one piece back on, it's already barely moving. If I put two arm pieces with stabilized, it's perfectly stable, it's not moving at all. If I do not move my mouse, my aim will not move. That is that is awesome mod for a sniper build. Now my mutations, at this moment still suppressed, because I replaced one mutation, what means I used all the serums again. I'm addicted to five things that you can see to, to use the junkies for the full, full potential. And those addictions doesn't really bother me too much. There is not much that I'm losing actually. And mutations are as follow. Adrenal reaction to give me plus 50% damage when below 20% health. Bird bones, extra agility for sneaking. And I can jump from much higher and do not do damage to myself. Carnivore, double benefits from meat. I just prefer this because I can eat raw meat and I don't need to spend time cooking. A chameleon, there is no side effects, then why not? Eagle eyes, extra perception is, is nice for hit chance in VATs and critical damage. Does it do really too much as I sh show in my aerial video about criticals, but it's still a little bit. Egghead, intelligence plus six, this helped me level up much faster and actually I'm changing builds so often and testing new builds that I have the egghead of every one of my characters. I cannot live without it. Marzupial, obviously jump height and speed demon, especially for the faster reload. Faster movement speed is nice as well, but faster reload is essential. And now into the perks. Strength is just one, then it doesn't really matter what you will have. Under perception, I'm rotating some of those perks. Like always all the riflemen's and tank killer is usually here, but concentrated fire, I'm swapping it with grand pounder and long, sh long shot. Depend what I want to do. I will either toss in long shot or ground pounder. Ground pounder is perfect if you go into like inside the west tech, there's a lot of super mutants, then this reload helps a lot and you don't really need like a wrench at all or concentrated fire is not required. You can simply hip fire every single super mutant and reload faster with ground pounder. And it helps with hip fire as well. Now endurance, it's a fireproof for Scorch Beast Sonic Blast. I'm totally immune thanks to the fireproof and just random grenades from super mutants will not harm me. Tenderizer for extra damage if I need to hit more than once. That's mainly have sense against Scorch Beast Queen as you were able to notice everything just dies, then this pack is rarely used, but for everyday running, I can just toast travel agent to have it, to have this uh, fast travel cost a little bit lower. And if I'm on the team, there is strength in numbers. That is awesome because it boosts every mutation by 25%. And that includes adrenal reaction, which means that your damage will go up as well if you are low health build. And when on a team, you can toss in Healing hands, just to annoy your friends with blooded builds when they will die and you revive them. They are cured from all rats, just one point. Enough to troll your friends. Uh, next, intelligence, demolition expert, nade rage. Demolition expert only have sense if you have explosive weapon. There is five intelligence mainly for one reason, as this build is aimed to be perfect for a solo play through as a main character, then it's five to be able to use gunsmith and mod or your weapon by yourself without asking anyone. Then five intelligence is essential for this. If you don't need it to be like a universal character, you can go very well with free intelligence and use those points somewhere else. Under agility, cover operative, your sneak is your weapon and your sneak damage is really brutal, then you want to boost it as much as possible. Mr. Sandman, the same, just during the night, boosting sneak damage. Sneak, obvious, escape artist to mainly, it's not to lose the enemies, but it's mainly removes all the noise from moving. Then basically you can move around without making any noise, what's obviously beneficial for sneak builds. Gunfu, that, that's obvious, swapping targets. If you have like low firing weapon, something like lower action, it's perfect. Before lower action is able to shoot again, Gunfu will swap the target. And adrenaline, 
that's a beast perk. If you can kill a couple mobs, your damage are boosted by 60%, was quite crazy. Then under luck, we have Bloody Mess, Class Freak, Critical Savvy. It is awesome if you want to use some uh, critical attacks, mainly for this guarantee hit. Then good with salt, that I'm using for farming. It normally will be swapped, like I will use in this place where is my four crippling, like Scorch Beast Tormentor. Will be Tormentor to cripple Scorch Beast Queen faster, not regular Scorch Beast. Regular Scorch Beast will die anyway in two shots or one shot. Oh, one more thing about Class Freak. I know that not everyone is using and it's not mandatory for use. The main reason I'm using it is intelligence. I want to have as much intelligence as possible to get my level up faster, but obviously you can swap it for something else or just reduce your luck below 14. But I do like to have a high luck just to be able to regenerate my crits every second shot. And I think that will be everything that I wanted to tell you about this build. If you have any questions, please go into the comment section. I'm always checking the comments and I try to reply to as many as I can. And please let me know what's your favorite build, what's your favorite weapon, and what do you think about this stealth sniper build? Is it something you will consider using or you will do some necessary changes? Please let me know. And as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.